Okay, so I want to work on writing out equations by hand for hyperbola or hyperbole. And um, again, you cannot do this on the calculator, so there's the basic version uh, that we'll look at first, which is pretty much all the information has been given to you on the graph, but you just have to read it and figure out what it says. So remember um, from the tutorial just showing in Desmos what these different things do, this guy, again, is going to be your horizontal asymptote. And this means that it's going to be shifting it up down. And this guy down here is your vertical asymptote. And that will be shifting you left, right. And then this one helps us deal with um, kind of the curve of it, how quickly it curves. And I'll show you guys how to figure that out exactly from the graph. So let's take a look at this first one. Um, maybe we'll look at the blue guy first. So starting with our first step, we're going to lightly trace in the actual asymptotes. So here you actually have to look at the blue graph and figure out where are the like what's the horizontal line that both those on both sides it's kind of approaching but never quite getting to and if you kind of look back it's getting close to 4 and if you trace that all the way through it's also getting close to y equals 4 on the other side so we know we've got y equals 4 and that means um, that's going to give us our horizontal asymptote the next one that we trace in would be our vertical and looking here I notice that it's getting close to x equals 2 at the top and at the bottom. So there we have a 2 and here we have a 4. So that's going to give us the actual information. So remember that B is the number for your horizontal asymptote and C is the number for the vertical asymptote. You just have to watch out for the signs. So I'll show you what I mean by this. Um, our horizontal asymptote is B so we know that B is equal to 4 and our vertical asymptote is C and in this case we know our C is equal to 2. Now, the next part that we've got to find is going to be A, and that um, can be a bit tricky, but if you follow a simple method, you can get to it every time. So, one of the ways to do it is go to where the intersection of your two asymptotes meets, and I want you to go to the right one, so we're just going to go over one, and then you're either going to count up, or if it was a negative parabola you'd, or hyperbola, you'd count down. But in this case, we're going to count up and see how many spaces it takes till we hit exactly the graph. So I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, five, because that's where it actually crosses over the line. That's the actual point there. So that's five. So that's what A is going to be. I've gone from the center of the asymptotes over to the right one, and then counting how far up I had to go before I reached my graph. So in this case, A is equal to five. Now that you've got that information, let's just plug it in. y is equal to 5, a is 5, x minus c, which is 2, and then plus b, which is 4. So that's our equation. Take a look at the red one next. Same process, let's trace in lightly our asymptotes. It looks like that's going to be the asymptote along there for the horizontal and that is at negative 3. And here for your vertical, that's at negative 5, so negative 5 for the vertical. So from that, we know that b, being the horizontal asymptote, is going to be a negative 3, so b is equal to negative 3. And here c, the vertical asymptote, c is equal to negative 5, and we've got to figure out what a is going to be. So again, from a, for A, you start from where the horizontal asymptote meets the vertical asymptote, across right there. We're going to go to the right one. We're going to count how far up we have to go, and in that case it's just 1. We just had to go up a distance of 1 to get there, versus the last one we had to go up a distance of 5. So A is equal to 1. Plugging all this in, Y is equal to A is 1, so 1 divided by X minus c, but you'll notice c is actually a negative, so that becomes minus a minus 5, and then minus 3, because b was also negative. Now that minus a minus really doesn't look nice, so a negative and a negative will simplify in that case to plus 5. 
because we always know that if I've moved to the left, I'll have it end up with a plus in that equation, and if I move to the right, I'll end up with a negative in that equation. So there we go. Just watch the signs. A double negative will turn it into a positive. Looking at the next one, our black graph. Going from the top again, look to find your asymptotes, and this one, the horizontal, appears to be in here, and that's at negative 7. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit so we can see any more information here. This appears to be my vertical. Again, the graph is approaching those from all sides, but never quite reaching them. And that happens to be at 6. So, again, B being my horizontal, that is a negative 7. C, in this case, my vertical, is a 6. And A, again, starting from where the asymptotes cross, go to the right one and then count how far up or down we have to go to get there. 1, 2. In this case, 2. So y is equal to 2 over x minus c, which is 6, plus b, which is a negative 7, so I'm just going to say negative 7. So I've got y is equal to 2 divided by x minus 6, all in the bottom, minus 7. So those are your equations for the basics. One thing that you do want to be careful of is just making sure that you get your asymptotes drawn in correctly and don't screw up the signs. If there's a double negative, it'll turn to a positive. One other thing to watch out for in the future also is about um, negative hyperbola. So for instance, if I gave you a graph that looked like so, not exactly pretty, but you notice where I would start to find the A, I actually, if I go over to the right, I have to count down. And I go down by 1, 2. So the A in this case would be a negative 2 because you've gone down. So A is negative if you go down, like I've said here, and it's positive if you go up. So just be aware of the negatives.